uh, batch layout. So this is for your, your batch templates. Do you have a... Uh, yeah, there a should be one template there? in there. Badge layout. So if you had um, badge layouts in the system, it's going to list them all here. Um, so there's one in here. You click edit. <clears throat> so this is where you could uh, configure your your badge layouts. Um, you can bring in different uh, different elements, um, shapes, static text, images, static images, um, and then you have your um, template fields here, which are um, dynamic, um, so these are pulling from fields that are in the S2 system. Um, so on the actual person page or cardholder page, um, it has a number of different fields which these are uh, referencing. And then you can just, you know, drag and drop. Photos, signatures, um, user-defined fields, um, pretty much um, most of the, the elements on the cardholder page you can you can bring into the badge template. And then down below you have smart elements, uh, barcodes and, and mag stripes. You can if you had a, a barcode you wanted to associate with the the, the template if you wanted to you know, have a printed barcode every time it prints out of the printer, you could set up the template with that barcode. So these are just simple drag and drop. So if you, you want to put a field on the template, you just drag it over, put it in place, and then you'll have um, properties over here that you can configure um, that uh, element with. So if you wanted to, you know, change the border color or the text color, or, you know, the, the, the font, or, you know, there's a number of different options here. Was this uh, previously a different app? Yes. So uh, this is the um, the new uh, the new batting software that we have available. So um, if you're using the the older software, you'll have a different uh, application where you manage the templates um, and the the badging um, piece uh, in general is a little bit different than the new the new software. So I think the I think the version you need to be on to have this available in, within the S two app is four point nine. Yes. And there's a there's a license flag that needs to be changed, uh, so you'd have to contact us and we'll get that changed for you. Are you guys still using the only badging? Uh, it was, uh, I, well, I don't know what app uh, we, we needed, but yes. <laughs> So you have like a, a old like. Do we have the template saved in there? We can't do anything with it. Oh, okay. So, uh, so you just haven't edited a template in a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it runs on a, like a separate workstation. It was more the like an older architecture. This is just built in the browser. So. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's the benefit of the newer yeah. uh, the newer software. It's all you know built in on the browser. You can go and you know pretty much open up any web browser and make make changes to the template. You can you know do your your printing from pretty much any browser. Makes sense. And if you guys are already licensed for it, then just reach out to, to Mike at Access and we'll get that transferred over. Yeah, but, uh, in a coming version two, the old badging is no longer going to be supported, so there will come a point where you're, you'll have to switch over. questions about the, the batch layouts. I mean, there's a number of different things that you can do in here. You can, you know, build it in such a way that, you know, uh, things are conditional based on something, you know, you have maybe a field that indicates this person's an employee versus a contractor. You can have that template change, to, you know, from this to that based on that, that field change. Uh, you know. What do you do, just by the, the uh, 
the card, it prints right on the card with the color yep. printers that already. Yep, exactly. exactly. So yeah, I mean this this is designed for printing your badges on a on a badge printer. So you would you know design your your layout here, and then um, you know when a when a new person needs a, a badge issue, they would um, you know be uh, you know assigned a, a photo and so on and so forth, and then you would print it out. And that template would be what what displays in the badge. So a lot of companies, kind of in the Nate's point, a lot of companies will have a different template for the type of employee that would easily identify them as. A contractor or a permanent employee or a temporary employee, maybe by an outline, border, or a background color, <clears throat> or something because their badges are going to be displayed. So you might have one set up for each you know type of personnel, and then you just associate that badge design with that person, and, and you can print it out from there. Gotcha. Can you talk about the badge workflows and, and like marking a new photo and stuff for for people? Yep. The next uh, section is the, the badge workflow. So in the badge workflow, um, you have a couple of different things. It first shows you a list of um, people that um, either are, are needing to be printed or photos taken or they have been and it's waiting for approval. Um, the, this workflow is configurable. Um, but basically, um, this allows you to um, look at you know who's who who might be pending a photo, who might be pending a badge print, um, which are, are those, those options are uh, configurable on the on the person page. When you add a new a uh, new person to the system, you can say, okay, I'm going to mark them. You know, they need they need a photo and they need a, a badge print. Somebody can check that if they don't have a, a badge printer. Maybe maybe you do. Central uh, batch printing. Some customers do uh, batch printing centrally, um, and they use this this workflow um, heavily. Um, if you're not um, if you're not necessarily set up to do um, you know uh, central printing where you're you know printing for multiple sites, um, you could opt to use this page, or you can print directly from the person page, which we'll show you in a moment. But basically, this uh, you know allows you to, to see the you know the the um, the records that are pending some type of um, you know uh, approval in the batch print workflow. Uh, this one's uh, waiting for um, uh, an approval. So basically, this this workflow is set up for. Once the uh, once once the badge gets printed, it's it's pending on somebody to uh, actually approve it and um, you know add the the credential and the card number uh, into the system. Do you have do you send that like uh, through email to somebody? Is that, how does that get approved? Like, is it somebody would be? It's it's local on the system, so it's you know it's designed for you know a badging administrator to log in here. They can you know. Bulk, they bulk print these, uh, and then they can um, assign the the badge number. Um, which we'll get into it in a moment, but they can assign the credential uh, to the person, and then you know click approve down here, which indicates you know the badge came out, it looks correct. They can click approve, and then that uh, basically ends the workflow process for that. And there's. A number of different things that you can configure in here. You can set up, you know, your default badge layout. So you can set it to the one that we we were just in as you know the default layout. You can select a default printer. So when you bulk print these, they'll you know they'll all go to you know the same printer. Um, and an, an enrollment reader um, is a uh, you know a card reader that you can uh, select um, as the enrollment reader. So basically, when the card comes out of the printer, you just scan it on that enrollment reader, and it will assign that card to the person. Um, and then uh, the the format, uh, the formats, the the bit structure on that particular card, you can set that uh, in here as well. And then these are um, for your your photo aspect ratio and signature aspect ratio. 
And then uh, some options down here um, are for your capture. So there's, a, there's another um, piece of software for, for capturing photos. Um, you can, I think that works, they can set up for it, but we can take a look at the capture. But basically it's a piece of software when you want to take somebody's photo that pops up on the screen, you have somebody sit in front of the camera, you take the photo and it auto, auto crops, and you can, you know, move the, the image around to, to get it correct, and then you can save it. And then uh, down here below, you have no credential for a uh, photo badge. So if you're printing, maybe you're printing badges out of the system that don't necessarily have a credential. Um, you know, maybe it's a, a visitor pass or something like that. It doesn't have, you know, it's not going to do anything at the card reader. You can tell it, you know, this isn't a, a credential. And then auto approve down at the bottom if you don't want to um, approve the badge at the end of the process. If you just want to make assumptions once it comes off the printer that it's you know good, um, you can click this and it will automatically approve the the workflow. Is that global or is that just in this workflow screen? Uh, that's that's global, so that's going to apply to the uh, the person record as well if you're printing from the person record. <coughs> Uh, data operations um, is used to basically make bulk changes to the system. You can um, import card holders and make make changes to the card holders in, in bulk. Um, it uses a, uh, a CSV or a TSV, you know, uh, delimited text file. Um, so you you know have a you know you can have an Excel spreadsheet full of uh, you know new users you want to add them to the system. You can um, set that up and upload it uh, through this uh, this function. <coughs> this is kind of what it looks like. Though. If I were to open this up in Excel, there would be one line with a command add person, um, the first name and last name. You can add a bunch of different fields to it if you want uh, to populate those in the system. But you could um, use this to add new people, make changes to, to people, maybe you're assigning a new access level to a bunch of people, you can do that with this tool. One thing that I want to mention here is, if, if you remember back to the person IDs on the person record, if you're going to be importing modifications to existing person records, the key to do the update is, is that person ID. So it's a, one reason why you'd want to have those be unique. Um, evacuations, um, if your system's configured uh, with um, evacuation plans and mustering, um, which we can get into in a little bit, um, you can start or end an evacuation plan in here. Um, but you can basically set up the system in a way um, where it's accounting for who's in the facility. You can create evacuation plans to basically account for, you know, people that might be uh, in the facility. So if you have, for instance, if you have a, a fire alarm, um, you can have um, people muster out of the building. So they're either, you know, scanning a, a card reader or using our, our mobile application to indicate that the person has exited the building. Um, and then you can get a count of, you know, who's left in the building. You, you can see who those people are. Um, but again, your, your system has to be, you know, configured uh, to, to have that option uh, function properly. Uh, lost card, um, really touched on credentials yet, but basically uh, this feature is designed for um, if, if you happen to find a <coughs> card, of, somebody dropped their card on the floor, um, maybe you don't print badges so you don't know who that card belongs to, you can go in here and either type in the number that's on the back of it and click search and it will bring up the person that that card belongs to or you can click use reader select the reader you want to scan click go and then you scan that reader and then it will pop up the person that that card is assigned to 
but it's just you know uh, designed to be a, a quick way to kind of figure out who, who a card belongs to. Uh, more relevant if you're not printing cards. Uh, add people, we, we did touch on this uh, when we added you, uh, had you add yourself this morning, but uh, you know, pretty self-explanatory, you click add, you know, people add, this is where you would add your, your card holders, um, you know, first name, last name, Act activation, date and time by default is going to be the, the current date and time. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, showing the template. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing configured, but we can. Oh, they don't have. We it. can touch on that. Uh, expiration <coughs> date and time. This is uh, if you, you know, had a, a set, you know, expiration date and time. You wanted that that record to expire. You could configure that in the system when you're adding the person. You can obviously do it afterwards as well. And then the uh, the person ID. So this. Uh, this can be uh, configured a few different ways in the system. The, the person ID um, is typically a unique identifier for the, the person or the record. Um, we, we typically recommend using um, you know, uh, an employee ID number or something that, that you're already using that might uniquely identify the person. Um, that's, that's typically the recommendation. Uh, if you don't have such a um, number in place that uh, you assign to people. Um, you can either you know type something in here that you, will be unique, or or allow the system to auto automatically generate the number. Um, <clears throat> you can set the system up so that it will automatically populate that with some number. Um, it's it's based it's based on a sequential ordering in the system. Um, so if the, if your system's um, populating this automatically. If the last one was you know 11, the next one's going to be 12, and so on and so forth. Um, so there are a, a couple of different ways this can this this can be configured. Um, you can set it up so that you know you can't have any duplicates in the system, um, which is typically advised. We you know we, we usually want this to be unique. As as Mike mentioned, that data operations tool. If I wanted to make a bulk change to somebody, we're using this ID number to make that change to those people. So it is kind of important, especially if you're, you know, using data operations or you want to integrate with, um, you know, maybe your HR system or um, Active Directory down the road, or you know, you want to have some some integration down the road that um, manages or make changes to card holders. You, you know, that feels kind of important to uh, plan uh, for in, in, in advance. The, uh, the, the notes field uh, is, you know, just like it says, if you want to put a note on that record, um, you can add that there. Uh, and then over here on the left, you have a couple of different uh, menus. You have information. Um, so these are user-defined fields in the system. So you can define up to 20 different fields in your system to, to hold whatever data you're looking to hold. Um, on that person. So maybe you have maybe you have a field that says you know department. You have one that says title, location, um, you know type. You know you, you can have all of those fields uh, set in here, and you can you can configure what these field uh, labels are in the system. Um, you can run reports on these as you well. Can. That's the important. Can you use this to give access to certain areas or anything like that? So, if there is so this this section wouldn't be uh, used for that. Um, that would be under access levels, which we'll, we'll jump into in a moment. But you, uh, can, you can put consultants, visitors, contractors. Yep, like exactly. That yep, you can you know put the put the type you know. Um, so you can you can change this from a you know a. A text field to a drop-down list, um, or you can change it to a number or a boolean, yes, no, um, checkbox. Checkbox. Um, so these are you know configurable to, to what you're trying to get or populate the system with uh, for the for the cardholder. 
You know, ver very often I see things like employee ID in these fields or, or some value that you want to populate the barcode on the badge. Maybe it would be like the title, department uh, type of thing. So you can pull these onto the badges. Uh, even the data that can be in the mag stripe on the card is often in these fields. So you have up to 20 of those, and then down below that you have uh, contact. Um, so these are in the system um, for you to use by default. Um, so you can plug in the person's phone number, their email, their, uh, their SMS text uh, ad address, their location, um, other contact, um, like an emergency contact you can plug in here with, uh, with their telephone number, uh, and then vehicles um, if you want to track your cardholder vehicles, you can also uh, plug those in here as well. And you can put the you know the make model make model color license plate info in here if you want. So once once the uh, once the information has been populated, you click save, which would save it in the system like we did earlier. Um, one thing that um, I haven't mentioned is there is also a template that you can create. So in your system, you can create templates for um, for person records, um, which will populate uh, some of these fields for you, so you're not having to, to do it every time. Um, jump over to templates. Real quick. So it's actually very useful if you're adding a lot of, you know, I'm adding a contractor, I'm adding the person in the IT department, I'm adding you know, person that's going to work out of this building, you can set up default templates with default access control levels and um, different things that all populate once you select that template. Kind of a predefined jump start right. to adding that person in the system. So, say this was your your type field. You put you populate it with employee, uh, and then now if I go, it's not showing you. So um, if you have a uh, template set up in your system or uh, you configure a template that will show up here with a drop down, you can select that template and then whatever you set that template or configure it with it will apply to the record. So I just you know, put the uh, user defined field number one as employee, uh, but you could um, set other things in there. Um, Expiration dates, uh, access levels, you know, whatever um, you can set in, the, in that template. <clears throat> so the next, uh, the next item on the menu is uh, credentials. If you click credentials, um, it will show you this here, and this is where you would actually add your uh, your cards. Um, so we call them credentials because credentials can be a number of different things. It could be a uh, an RFID card, it could be, um, could be a facial recognition, you know, biometric, um, key fob, key fob, you know, a number, a number of different things. Um, some customers are using, you know, license plate recognition now with the access control. It could be a license plate um, entry. Um, could be yep. a mobile uh, proxy for yep. all kinds of different credentials. So you would uh, typically you would enter the number that's that's on the badge um, here in this encoded number field. There's also another field if we click this little menu down here called the hot stamp. Um, so the the number that's on the back of the badge um, that's typically what you would consider the the hot stamp. Um, so. There's one be, uh, behind the printer that actually has a hot stamp on it. Here we go. So here's your here's your RFID badge. The the number down here 
this number right here would be your, your hot stamp, um, which would be plugged in there. Uh, typically, what the card is actually encoded with and what's printed here are the same. So your, your encoded number would typically be the same as your hot stamp. However, some customers order these so that the number on the badge is not the same as the number that uh, is encoded. Uh, so that's where you would have a different encoded number than what's printed on the badge. It's typical that they're usually the case, but they're, they're the same. Uh, the credential format is the uh, is referring to the the format of the badge or the bit structure that the the actual badge is uh, using. Um, so that would you know you would select the um, the format the credential format for the badge you're programming. Uh, expiration date, uh, you can put an expiration date on the credential itself. Um, it doesn't necessarily expire everything else that the person has assigned to them, but it will expire the, the credential. So if the person has multiple credentials assigned to them um, and you put an expiration date here, it's only going to expire that, that credential. It's not going to expire anything else. So you can add multiple credentials to a person. Uh, and then the status, uh, if you're adding a new card, um, typically you'll set it to active. And then over here to the, the right, there's a read button. If you click the read button, it's going to allow you to select a reader um, from your system. So you would select that reader, you, you would click go, you would go scan the card on the reader, and it will populate all this information for you. Automatically based on that read. I think Mike's going to show. There you go. So there's Mike's card. So if you have if, if you have a, a reader or an enrollment reader set up where you do your badging, uh, it comes in handy. Um, so you're not having to type that information in by hand. Um, it eliminates you know potential uh, errors, you know, typing it in, if you put a, you know, a two instead of a one, obviously the badge isn't going to work, but if we do it with a, with a card read, um, it will populate that information for you. And then uh, remote lock set, um, this is for, um, this is for uh, remote, what we call remote lock sets, they're, um, basically locks that they are all in one units that can install on the door. They can be um, either wireless or uh, operate over uh, PoE or power over Ethernet, um, but they're not uh, conventional, you know, readers. Um, but you can set a, uh, a user for those lock sets here if, if you have those uh, in use at your facility. Down below the credentials, you have uh, a settings section. Um, the first op option here is uh, regional anti-passback privileges. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are using this at your facilities, but um, anti-passback is um, basically uh, a rule or a set of rules you can implement um, at your facility where if um, you want to restrict somebody from sharing their card with the person behind them, um, you can implement anti passback. So um, think of it as if you know you walk through the door and then you hand your card back to the, the person uh, behind you. So you had a turnstile or something like that set up at your facility. If you handed that card back to them, they could enter the facility with your with your card. Uh, anti passback prevents that from happening. And then there's another um, there's another rule uh, that kind of falls into that called tailgating. So if if you um, you have a facility set up where um, you have multiple layers of um, security or um, access points um, to get into your facility, so you have um, maybe you have a gate entrance and then you have 
uh, main main entrance into the building. If you didn't badge into the gate when you came in, the ca the tailgating rule won't let you badge into the front door. So here you can set that privilege for the user. By default, the, the if, if your system set up with anti passback, the rule is going to apply to the user. But if you don't want it to apply to the user, or you want to change how how that rule is applied to that specific person, you can go in here and you can exempt the person. You can select hard always, which means they're going to be denied when they invoke that rule, uh, or soft always, which means that when they invoke that rule, it's going to log it in the system, but they'll still be granted access. And based on you know that the anti pathback rules getting invoked, you can have alerts being sent to people. You know, you can have events show up on the screen, and so on and so forth. Uh, notify on expirations. So if um, if you use expiration dates in your system. You can set up uh, notification groups of uh, people you want to notify when the records nearing uh, expiration or when it when it expires. So you can you can set up a group of people that you want to have notified when um, you know the, the records expiring. Here you would uh, select the notification group that uh, would be notified um, when this uh, records either nearing expiration or or. or uh, the, it's expiring. Uh, exempt from credential uh, non-use rules. So you can set up your system um, to deactivate cards if they're not used after a period of time. So you can set up your system to say, you know, if, if somebody doesn't use their card within 90 days, the card's going to deactivate automatically. So you can set that up as a, a rule in your system. If you um, want to exempt the, um, the person uh, from that rule, this is where you would select that, exempt from credential non-use rule. And it would uh, you know, exempt that person. So when 90 days hits, they haven't used their badge, it's still going to be active. Uh, use extended unlock. Um, so extended unlock is, um, a feature that we have that when a user scans uh, a portal or a door, that door stays open a little bit longer um, based on how the, the portal is configured, that, that door can stay open longer um, for that person. So you would select use extended unlock. The typical use case for that scenario is for maybe somebody that's handicapped or somebody that needs a little extra time uh, to get through a uh, door. You would, uh, you know, check use extended unlock, and when they scan that door, it will give them more time to get through that door. And then trace this person. Um, you could uh, click. You you could select that uh, on a person if you're maybe wanting to um, track their activity. Um, you want to get notified when that person uses their badge. Um, you could uh, click trace person, um, and it would, you know, not it would, you know, trigger an event which would send you a notification when that person uses their badge. Um, typical use cases if you're maybe trying to, to look for somebody, or um, you, know, you don't know where somebody is in the facility that you're trying to find, and you, you want to, you know, try to figure out where they are. Or if you don't want them to use the badge, yeah. Uh, pin number. If you're using um, <coughs> if you're using uh, dual factor uh, authentication, um, meaning your your doors are using uh, a card swipe and a pin number, you can set that pin number here. Plug in the PIN number. Uh, and then over here, if you want to exempt a person from using a PIN so they don't have to put in a PIN number, you can do that. You can do that as well. Uh, 
jumped into the next uh, section, access levels. Um, so this is where you would actually assign what uh, what doors that the person would have access to. Um, and we do that based on access levels. And we also have what's called access level groups. So you can create a grouping of, of these um, and create an access level group that you can assign to somebody. So basically how access levels work is um, they're uh, assigned uh, either a single uh, reader or a group of readers uh, and then um, you can assign other attributes to those access levels like uh, time specs if you only want the access level to work you know during normal business hours you could apply a time spec to the access level that will only allow it to uh, be used during a certain period of time uh, threat levels you can apply to the access levels as well um, but this is where you would assign the access level. So, you know, you had um, maybe an employee, uh, you know, access level you would assign here, which would give an employee their, their access, and then you maybe have another access level for contractors that you would assign, so on and so forth. But pretty simple, just, you know, select the access level you want, click the arrow, it applies it. And you just click save and it saves it to that record. Same thing with the credential with the access level, you guys can make the uh, access level expire. <coughs> which you see, yep. just like when he was doing the credential, you can click and say, oh, I'm going to assign this access level, but it's just temporary. So <coughs> I might give somebody access to that door, yep. um, but have it expire on Friday. and. Uh, and then uh, there's the auto remove feature here that if you want it to stay in the record but then just deactivate or if you want it to auto remove. And the reason why that's important is if you find that you use reports to show, hey, who has this access level? If you don't tell it to auto remove, that'll show up for them whether it's active or not. Right? So <clears throat> that's why that's there. So this is what Mac was referring to, your, your activation. So if you, you want to um, maybe delay when that access level um, becomes active for that person, you can assign an activation date um, in the future. And then maybe you only want that access level to be assigned for a temporary period of time. You can put an ex expiration date um, on the access level itself. So um, when it re reaches that expiration date, the access level will be deactivated, so you won't have access to that area anymore. Um, and then uh, the auto remove, um, as Mac mentioned, um, once it reaches that expiration date, the, uh, the access level uh, will no longer appear on the person's profile. So I just pulled up a, a person page. Um, so we just moved to the, the people search. So we click people search. It's going to pull up this um, this people search uh, you know, these people search fields. So you, now you have the ability to to um, search for people in the system based on uh, criteria. Um, you, you, maybe you're looking for somebody specific. You you could put in their name um, or their badge number, um, or maybe you're you're you know searching for um, you know uh, employees. You could uh, search based on that criteria here, uh, and then once you um, fill out the criteria, you just click search, and it's going to give you the result of that uh, that search. Um, if you don't want to put in a criteria, you can just click search. That's going to show you everybody. And then, um, so this will give you the results of your, your search. Uh, gives you the, the person's name, uh, the photo, if, if uh, there is one associated. Um, 
if there's an expiration date, it will list it here. Uh, modified is when they were last, you know, the record was last um, modified date and time. Uh, username, so these are for um, people that have login rights to the, the S2 system. Um, if they have a username associated, it will show up in this column. And then uh, access levels, this will give you uh, a list of their uh, access levels that they have assigned. Uh, card numbers, um, gives you, you know, a list of their card numbers and then the card format. So once um, once you have the results here, you find somebody that you want to make a change to, you just click on their name, pulls up their record, and then you can make the change to the record. Some sections we haven't touched on yet are badging and login. So badging, um, if you added a new record to the system and you don't necessarily do the badging piece, somebody else maybe you know prints the badge, you can you can check on uh, request badge print, which adds it to that that. Uh, batch uh, workflow that we were in earlier. Um, if you do do the batch printing um, and you don't want to use the workflow, you don't need to uh, check that box. Uh, down below here where it says batch print count, this is the number of times the person has had a batch printed for them. Uh, so it will give you a, a count here of uh, how many times the person's had a batch print. <coughs> The, uh, the badge layout um, is what we were on earlier. Um, you can select the layout that you want to assign to that person. Uh, credential. So this is if you have a uh, credential badge you're printing, you can um, select the format here. If you don't have a, maybe it's a non-credential badge, you can click non-credential. And then the card printer. So this will give you a list of your, your printers associated with the system. You select the printer that you're going to print to. And you can save the record. And then um, you can click photo, uh, print photo ID, which when you click that, it's going to send it to the printer. So maybe this is a new record, doesn't have a photo assigned to it yet. You need to, to uh, associate a photo with the record. You would uh, click up here, the little edit uh, icon on the on the photo. Uh, you can click request new photo if, it, if it's somebody else's responsibility to take the photos. Maybe your, you know, the HR people will put this information in. They don't take photos. They don't print the badges. But um, you know, if that needs to be done for this person, you can click. You know, that person. And click request new photo uh, which will cause that uh, record to show up on the badge print workflow. Uh, upload, um, if you have a, uh, a JPEG image um, from a camera that you just want to upload into the system, you can just click upload and it will, it will let you select that um, photo from the, uh, from the file system on the PC. Yeah. So, for anybody that's you know doing uh, batch printing from the system, they're maybe not familiar with the the batch software or the, or the new batch software. I would you know, suggest uh, taking a look at that uh, that workstation once once Mike gets it going um, to uh, see how that capture software works. Um, it's it's really designed uh, to to work. Um, if you have a, a, a capture camera on, on the PC, um, if, if you're using a, a you know a, a separate camera, you're taking photos from your phone or something like that. Um, maybe you're just doing a, an upload versus a capture, um, which you know some some uh, users do. Um, but the capture the capture software does come in handy, um, you know, to, to crop the image to, to size and and whatnot. Uh, and then we have uh, the delete option here if you wanted to uh, 
remove the, the photo from the record, you can click delete and that will obviously delete it. And then down here is a, the signature section. Um, some customers have um, a requirement to put sig or store signatures in the system. They might have a, uh, a signature capture device, um, one of those Topaz uh, signature devices. You could connect to this and capture signatures, um, or if you have a way to upload those, you can do that. Yeah, it might have been that everybody's sitting on the same record and we were trying to edit that record. In the login page, which we were on earlier, um, this is where you would um, set the um, user accounts for people that um, you know, log into the system. Um, depending on your, your level of privilege in the system, you may or may not see this page um, or this section. Um, but if you're tasked with assigning new user roles, um, this, would, this would be where you do that. You would put the username and password in, and select their, their user role. Um, there, there can be uh, other user roles called custom user roles. Um, you, can, you can build in the system and assign uh, to the person, uh, and they would show up on this list here. Uh, alarm filter group. Um, in the system configuration, you can configure um, what we call uh, alarm filters and alarm filter groups, um, which allows um, users to only see you know, certain alarms. You can um, assign that to the user right here. And then uh, default widget desktop. So if you've, you've created a widget desktop, um, or maybe you know security your security guards, you could assign that to um, the user directly here. Uh, you can also assign the widget, the widget desktop, or a group of widget desktops to uh, user roles, so they would have access to those. And then custom menu. Um, I haven't touched on custom menu yet, but. Um, there's an option in the system to have a custom menu. And when I, uh, when I reference custom menu, it's, it's one of these up here. For some reason, I can't see it. Now I don't have any, any custom menus set, but I could set a custom menu for um, my account if I wanted to. So you can configure a menu with only certain objects you want that person to, to see or use, uh, and then you can assign that menu to the user or, or to the user role if you're using custom user roles. one called user tasks so I can save and then when I log out and log back in I'll see another menu so here's the uh, the custom user menu and there's five different objects in there, but you can configure that menu for your users, um, and you can optionally restrict them just to that menu if you, you just wanted them to see certain objects. Um, you could do that, or if you, know, you want to assign your own you know, custom menu for the, the objects that you're most frequently using, you can build your own custom menu and assign it to your, uh, your, your user account.
you have the, the capture working? It is, yeah. So, um, before I get into the other uh, sections on the administration menu, um, I'll have you guys um, go ahead and um, assign a, a photo and an access level to your to your record. So once your uh, once your record's been saved, and you want to go ahead and click uh, print photo ID, we'll we'll see what comes out of the printer. Uh, 